Welcome everyone to Power Playbooks. I'm Sarita Dua along with my lovely co-host Via Williams and we are new for 2024 coming to you live on the first and third Wednesday of each month. As you guys all know, new um, and follower, loyal followers alike, that we aim to bring amazing speakers that open up and share their playbook with us. And our goal for these sessions are for you to walk away with tangible, actionable takeaways that you can apply to your business right away. And with that, I'm going to kick it off to my co-host, Via Williams, who's going to introduce our amazing guests. Thank you guys for being here. Hey, everybody. And um, yes, we... We realize chat is disabled, so we are working on getting that turned on for you um, right now. I apologize. You can get into the Q&A, which some very smart person, uh, Irene, Irene wins the star of the day, um, got on to inform us that chat was um, disabled. Okay, guys, uh, this is really, really important. Um, we have got to be good at talking about data and sharing market data now. We are in that market it is heating up in all markets. If chat was turned on, I would ask all of you guys to respond to that. Um, I'd love to hear if that's happening in your local market. So I'd love to see when we when we can turn chat on um, what market you're in and if you're feeling it heat up. Almost everybody I've talked to, certainly Seattle, Washington is heating up. Uh, I can feel a nice early spring market. Sean, you're nodding. Same with Idaho Falls. Oh yeah, we're we're seeing that yeah. here. Mike could probably speak to that even more, but just the the very early indicators, showings, appointments, consultations, those those early indicators are are spiking right now, which is exciting. Yeah, well, we we when we're in a market like this, and and for all of you guys who are um oh, it looks like will someone try to chat for us, see if it's uh see if it's working. It is working now. Yeah. Cool. Um, uh, I'd love you guys to get on and and let us know where you're from and if your market's heating up, if you're kind of feeling a heat up. Um, we have got to be good at talking about data, though. So we um, I've invited the um, masters in this field, um, uh, Sean Anderson and Mike Hicks. They have created a pretty incredible software called Area Pro um that that i've had the the privilege to see a demo on and i am a huge data nerd i don't know if you guys know about that me me know that about me i can't talk um i start almost every single client meeting with data um and and i'm always prepared with it so um i wanted to bring these guys on because i think they have mastered you know tracking it and then using it to get their consumer that get their clients in action so that's what we're going to talk about. Our next power playbooks, um, the first week in February, um, I'm going to have uh, Seychelle Van Poole on. And Seychelle and I have done this together a few times. Some of you might have seen us because we're both kind of data nerds. She has tracked her market in Dallas, Texas every single day for 10 years. And as you know, data rolls up. So you, if you don't track it daily, you lose it, right? You get the cumulative effect of it. So um, she's at a point now where um, she has complete dominated mastery over her market. And the good news is all of you guys could start doing what she's doing today. And 12 months from now, you'd have 12 months of daily data from your market that you could start comparing to on year two. So um, with that said, welcome. Oh, wait, Mike, is that what that is? That's what that is. Every Monday for about two years you know what they back there right on my desk i always knew you were amazing mike that right there <laughs> because you can't go yeah. back in time on that yeah all, all kinds of numbers well mike why is it important for you to do that let's start there mike and sean jump in but why is it important for us as agents to know the market, know the data. You know, so, uh, some of it's just selfish <laughs> in being, being just a little bit of a, a control guy. I just feel um, empowered and informed so that when, wherever you run into people at the grocery store, the soccer field, the, the grandkids game, whatever it is, that when people ask about the market, that 
you've got information. So for me, I actually do this every Monday and you'll see everything is folded in the middle. So after I do that on Monday, we do in our group, we do a Mike's Market Minute, but this thing goes in my back pocket. And so it travels with me because it just fits nicely there. And if I, when that question comes up, often I can pull this out. It, I end up side by side with somebody. And the ironic thing is with all these numbers, you don't have to know all these numbers. You understand the trend that those numbers have but you've got the numbers. And so- What the, are we seeing there, Mike? I'm sorry, what? What are we seeing there? What numbers uh, do you track? So I've got just, here's, here's what's on the market. And so that's what's on the market, the average price, the average price per foot, the average days on market and size. And then I've got how many are pending and then the pending ratio. So I track that pending ratio, which is just trying to measure pressure on the market. The higher the pending ratio, the more pressure there is in the market. And, and then I'm tracking the new listings and I'm comparing years. So this is the most current year that I went back year and one more year because, you know, we've had some unusual times. Mm -hmm. And so this is how many through that day of the week. So the day of the week, this one was January 2nd. So I was actually measuring the month of December with this one. And I did a little bit more detail for December because that was the quarterly and this was the month. And I just sit down and do a series of quick searches. It's the first thing I do on Monday morning. So I've got it with me and I'm equipped for the week, but it has the average price, the average price per foot for the houses coming on the market, tracking the pendings, the same information, those that are closed as well. And then at the end of the month, I've also on the back of this got some numbers on how many how many uh, back on markets there were, how many expired, just some quick numbers for comparison. And so this just helps me trend when I have three years like this. I can trend really quickly on on that, and just and so folks can really see how is the market. So I can actually just sit, and I'll usually just give it to them. I'll just say, well, take a look at this anything in here interesting to you and i'll explain what a few of the numbers are and off we go so it's one one approach that i have with me that it's just with me and it's easy and i don't have to memorize anything so uh, i'm curious that's fantastic on those three columns mike is that week the same week of the year so if it's week 17 in the year yep. that would be week 17 in 2023 week 17 uh -huh. in well, I do it as of every Monday, so it's relatively close. So it's basically measuring yeah. the first yeah. three weeks of January against the first week, three weeks of January in the previous two years. Yeah, yeah. That's incredible. I I, I think that that says, every, that says it all, right? That says it all. Um, Sean, what about you? You know, why do you think it's important to, to have this data for agents to track data? Well, yeah, I think, I mean, I think Mike nailed it. I, as we, there, there are some really critical conversations. Mike really focused on the lead generation side of it and just meeting people here and there, which is, is probably the most important. I mean, as we collect, you know, as we, as we meet new people and establish ourselves as experts without, because it's a delicate line, people want to be dealing with experts, but not know-it-alls. So you want to kind of just establish yourself as knowing what's going on in a in a way that's uh approachable still so the lead generation piece is really important but then also if you think about the number of times we interact with our existing clients in a way where, where they're trying to make decisions i mean it's, every time we get them on the phone it's because they have a pending decision that they've got to make they might have just they might be thinking about listing and they got to figure out what time of year to go on the market and what price to start at they might already be on the market and they're trying to decide should they drop the price or hold. They might have just gotten an offer and they're trying to decide should they should they respond fairly firmly or should they be a little bit flexible? Or maybe they're looking at houses and they're trying to decide those kinds of things. So that our clients are constantly facing really important decisions and there's no better way. If we don't give them data to use to make the decisions, they're gonna use emotion. And that's the last thing that we want to do, because generally that our emotions will generally trap us in these types of these types of decisions. So so that's why I think it's so important. So I, I would add to that, too, via that I also think it's having this with you is about conversion. It's, it's great to get the leads, but 
conversion happens with credibility. That's part of the equation. Credibility and and confidence that people have in you as you convey that. And so, I mean, imagine this, that the person who runs into me, wherever they run into me, and they ask about the market. So I produce, in the conversation, I decide it's appropriate to pull this out of my pocket or to get on my phone to show them some information. Um, rather than me just vomiting. Now, maybe in another hour, they run into somebody else that's in real estate and they ask them, so how's the market? And they say, oh, it's great. It's awesome. Or it sucks. Or, But that's what they say. And this happens on either side of when they spoke to me. The difference in the answer it's pretty big, right? It's how they're going to feel about what they got when they ask the question. There's a big difference. So, Mike, if you and I are standing at, uh, well, it's January, so we're standing in a gym uh, at a kid basketball game, and we drop the kids off, and we're in that 20-minute time before the game starts, you know? So we have time, you know, and we're kind of just, maybe we're sitting on the bleachers together. And I say, Mike, how's the market? How can you walk me through what that script would look like? Like how you would pull that out and how you would sort of answer that like if we're in role play mode? So you know where this comes from. I and mean, years ago I remember talking to Ben. This was back before Ben. Ben's always been Ben, but this was before the Ben of today. This is back in yeah. 2012 or something. And Ben was talking about open houses and you know, people come into open house and Ben has got a script, right? Hey, people come to open houses for one of two reasons. Either either they're thinking about selling and they're trying to assess the value of their home or they're actually looking for a home, which one are you, right? And so that was his assumption. It's an assumptive thing that they're doing something for a reason. So actually, when you asked me that question, the first thing I say is say, V, I'd love to talk with you about the market, but first, could I ask you a quick question? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, why are you asking? Why are you asking me that question? Are you just curious? Or are maybe you thinking about doing real estate sometime in the next months or year or two? I don't know. Like, I'm hesitant to say anything because I'm really not sure. But, I, you know, there is a side of me that would want to know how much my home was worth. Maybe maybe some yeah. thoughts have been in my head. Like, we are very preliminary, so I don't want to make it sound like we have plans to sell. Because, you know, sure. I don't sure. think we will. But there is a side of me that's like, well, could we? And what, what would that look like? And so I think where yeah. my head was at was like, I wonder how much my house is worth and if this would be a good year, should I just kind of buckle in, do a little remodeling and and mentally prepare to stay there two or three more years? Well, great. Well, first, let me let me pull this out. I want to show you a couple of things. I could tell you all kinds of things, but I wanted to just show you a, a few things. So first off, there are 266 homes on the market. So this is actually as of Monday. There were 266 homes on the market, and they were on the market for an average of $175 a foot. And I said, now, via this is the this is the full market, the entire market. Your house is likely a different market than what the overall market is because we have markets within our market, and they vary by price range. So we'll go through a couple of things about the overall market, but then let's dig into your price range just a little bit. And so I'll I'll go through a couple of these details and say, okay, so via do you, I mean, in your mind, what do you what do you hope your home is worth? What do you think the value of your home is anyway? Um, I don't know. I in my head it's probably one, one, five, one, two. Okay. Well, that's awesome. Would you like to see a little bit more information specific to your general your general price range? Yeah, I'd be curious to see like in Kirkland kind of what that price range is doing. Okay, so at that point in time, so do you have? And I'm assuming at this stage we've got time, right? So this conversation yeah. is that we're just sitting here killing time until the game starts, kind of thing. So yeah. this is when you mentioned area pros. So this is at a point in time where I'm actually going to pull out my phone and go to area pro, and I'm going to get some pretty specific information about your price range even down to your location where your home is. 
Okay, so before we go into that, so I just want everyone to hear what Mike, which I know you're, he's so masterful, right? I know you're all thinking it just like I am. But what he did is took my general how's of the market and, 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 and seamlessly got it to a point where we are now doing almost like a CMA on my house. We're, we're practically doing a market area analysis, right? I just want yeah. you guys to all, because it was so smooth. I, I'm not sure everybody even saw you do it, buddy. That was great. So now we're at a point. So, so you use the general stats because where my head went when you gave me the general stats, right? My first thought was, well, I don't know what that means. Is that high, low or medium? Yeah. When you say how many homes are on the market, like I want to know the relativity mm -hmm. to that. So what, if I would have said to you, um, okay, what what does that mean? Like, is that good? Is that bad? Is that okay? Like what, you know? Well, you've asked a great question. It depends, doesn't it? Because I, I really don't know what condition your house is, what your neighbor's homes look like. I don't know what kind of work you've done in your home. There are a lot of, there are a lot of variables, which by the way, that's why you should never depend on Zillow. Okay, stay away from those home values on those, on those set, those national websites out there that are trying to tell you how much your home is worth. Um, I, I am always going to make that point. I want to get people off of Zillow and give them the option to come to our website as soon as possible. Uh, um, so, Via, what I'm trying to do is is say two things. One is I'm going to give you the overall information. But the information about your house could be very different. And that's what I said, is that it really could be so different from the market. There's so many variables that, that we can only tell when we get very specific, but we can give you some general information that at least should be reasonably close. Now, I'll tell you, so I was actually sitting um, at lunch the other day and a real estate call came this last week and a, a call came in while I was sitting eating. And so I took the call and it was a real estate call. Well, there were two gentlemen sitting at a, a table just across from me that one of them spins around and he says, so you're in real estate. I said, yes, I am. He asked me for my name. I gave him my name. He said, oh, I've heard your name before. And I said, oh, great. And he says, so he, and then he asked the question, well, so how was the market? And I and so I just hit the skids and I said, oh, gosh, I'm great you ask. Can I ask why? Why are you asking me? Are you just curious or you have something going on? And I mean, he could have answered all kinds of ways. I've got my house on the market and it's not selling. I've been looking for two weeks or I'm just dead curious. Any of these of these two gentlemen, one of them, their son is starting to look. But this conversation evolved and I, in 10 minutes, I walked out with my with his name and information on a card because his son's going to be looking for a house. And so I gained that credibility. And he told me in the conversation that he'd been working with another agent who I know um, for some period of time. And I said, you know, um, I'm that's a great agent you got there. He says, dude, you're on the ball. I'd love you to help my son. So. You know, it's just one of those things you have the information, pulled him into the conversation, gave him way more than he asked for. I wasn't asking for anything in return. He asked, can I give you my information so I can connect with my son? So, you know, that it's 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 just one, don't make assumptions why people are asking you questions. Don't make overall assumptions about the market because when we get up in your part of the country, be up, Lord have mercy. How many markets are there? Uh, a million. And, I mean, there. It's right. I'm like Los Angeles. Like when you say when someone says they're from Seattle or someone says they're from Los Angeles, it's like okay, where? <laughs> you know what is that? Side of what freeway? <laughs> the right or it the means left? like one of twenty five cities, and then and then each city has completely different areas. So. Yeah. So the the key to all this, as you said, Via, is I want it to get personal as quickly as possible. Because at the point in time it gets personal in that conversation directed the product, I start finding out all kinds of stuff. And I'm asking, I'm asking a lot of questions before I start talking much. I'm just I'm just asking questions to pull them into the conversation. So the mic rule is, and I'm I'm calling it the mic rule, any general data question we immediately ask questions back to shift it into their personal experience, their personal needs. That That's brilliant. That is uh, probably the biggest takeaway of this, this whole webinar, Mike. 
But that said, you know, so now, now I stopped you. I stopped your, your great sales momentum. You had great sales momentum that I blocked. So, so that I just wanted to get through that. So, um, so this is a point where you, so I do want to see area pro, I don't know, Sean, if you can share it or if Mike can share it, but I do want us to show, and what I would say to everybody is, um, we don't sell or market anything on this webinar, but I asked them to use Area Pro because whatever whatever software you're using in your market, and I know Area Pro is available everywhere, you can get it, but it doesn't matter. What we want to learn today is how to present this in a way, you know, that is going to get us more business, right? So, you know, we're going to use Area Pro today because it's theirs and it's great, but, you know, it, you substitute whatever it is that you're using in your world if it's not this fair. Is that fair, you guys, mm -hmm. to, to say? Yeah, for sure. So can one of you guys, so if we were going back to that basketball game scenario, you know, we're sitting down and I'm assuming you're pulling this from your phone. Can we continue that a little bit? And I'd love to see how you present some of this localized data. Yeah, you bet. I can, I can share it here. Um, and I, I'll tell you, when we, we rolled this out probably two to three months ago. Mike and I have been compiling data for over a decade. So we have we have a 30 page report that we've been providing to our agents here, you know, and that we, every month we give them a printed bound copy and they kind of carry, they carry that around. Mike, you might have a, it's, it, it looks like this. And this is what, this is kind of how the idea of area pro was born was okay. We knew we need to make this cloud based. We need to make it more dynamic, more accessible and updated more frequently. So what, what you're about to see is just the very first version of that. And we did, we had to decide, okay, and you you asked before the call via you said what you know what are the most critical stats that are out there well we had to sit down for almost a full day and go figure out for version one of area pro if we come out if we roll out the most critical stats less than 10 i think you said you like to use two which is well i like to have access to eight to ten but i usually only present yes um uh, one to two at a time, but but it could Just be to keep that conversation. Yeah, yeah, cool. So I'll show you Area, Area Pro here. Um, let's see here. So this is our county here. This is this is the primary county that Mike and I work. We we cover quite a few counties. You can access the different areas across the top here. But essentially, we've taken, we've identified what we consider to be the most critical stats, and we've we've displayed them here in a way that's not intimidating to a consumer. Now, this is a tool, obviously, for agents, but we fully expect them to be pulling this up with clients, either on the fly, on 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 a phone, like Mike shared with us earlier, or on an iPad, maybe, or a, I'll do a lot of a lot of times. I'll just do a Zoom with clients. You know how oftentimes we just jump on the phone. I'll see if they can jump on jump jump on Zoom, and they're really good at that. Ever since COVID, most people are very comfortable doing that. So that's been a an advantage for us because then I can walk through and display it just like I'm displaying it for you. So um, it starts up top here, just displaying what the month supply of inventory is, and of course that's a function of some numbers down here. You know, some people call that the absorption rate, but but really, essentially, that's how long would our current inventory levels last us if we continue to sell at the pace we're selling. So right now, this is a in the past six months, we've sold 778 homes in Bonneville County. And if we divide that by six, then we get 130 a month. And so then if I take 130 and I keep selling at that pace, and we have 262 active homes right now in the county, we'd be out of homes in two months. And so that gives us a balance. And you know, you, you mentioned relativity, and that's so critical because if I said our county is selling 200 homes a month, or, and, and then I said, well, you know, I told someone else we're selling 600 homes a month, or I told you that, you don't really know if 200 or 600 is good or bad unless you're either comparing it to the same stat from a different period of time or to how many houses are available. And so 130 selling every month when you have 262, that's a two month supply. And, and most agents will consider between four and six, somewhere in that range as, as the threshold between buyer advantage, seller advantage. So, and a lot of times I think when people are asking what the what's the market doing and how's the market, that may be what they're asking is who's who's got, Who's got the edge right now, buyers or sellers? 
because everybody understands buyer's market, seller's market, even if they don't know the eco economics behind it and what it means. That's kind of what they're asking. So if you can explain that to someone in a way, of course, not overwhelming them. And like Mike said, using questions first, getting them talking, asking why they're asking, but then eventually help them walk away from that conversation, knowing who has the advantage right now, buyers or sellers. Now, of course, Mike is right that changes dramatically from price point to price point. So we have that data right here as well. You can you can see that number for any different given price range. When you get up- Boy, over, if you've got someone that wants to price at 525, that's the chart to show them, huh? Exactly, yeah. And you can, you can get that from up here too, depending, th this is more of a preference. So if we were drilling into 500,000, and then we clicked here at 500 to 600,000, now I've got those same numbers which is essentially this row on the chart, but it's all up here just in, if, if you don't really wanna overwhelm them, you can drill down that way. And we actually, in the next 30 days, we're gonna see one more layer of granularity where you could click again and see $10,000 brackets inside this five to 600. So you could get really narrow if you'd like. So, and then well, you can but... county and different areas. Go ahead, Bia. Sean, let's pretend let, let's so we're at the we're on the basketball, you know, we're on the sidelines. We've got 15 minutes before the, the game starts and we, you know, I'm getting interested now and you're kind of starting to realize I'm probably thinking more about selling than I'm letting on, you know, because I I'm I'm asking, you know, real questions. And, and, and let's say this is up. Maybe you brought your iPad to the game. Um, how would you walk through this with me as a is a potential listing? Um, well, great question. I would do exactly what Mike's talking about doing first at once. And you said we've kind of established that, right? I kind of know where you're at. And, and I love Mike's question about the price point. A lot of agents are nervous to ask what a seller thinks their house is worth because they're afraid the sellers are going to come back and say, well, isn't that your job? Like, didn't, isn't that why I would hire an agent to tell me? And that, but shockingly, nine out of 10 people will answer that question, especially now. They're all educated. They all know what Zillow, they know what the tax, the, the county thinks their house is worth. So if you ask it in the right way, you're going to get them to answer. And that's really important. When you, when he got that information out of you, now he could see it. Because if I started telling you, if you had a house in Bonneville County, Via, and I started telling you there's a two-month supply of inventory, you might get the wrong idea about, you know, and, and I said, the average days on market for sold properties is 42. And the, the list to sale price for sale to list price ratio is 98.6. I'm grossly misleading you because in your price point, there's actually a 13 month supply of inventory. Um, average days on market is shockingly low. Actually, I would expect that to be much higher, but there's just not a lot of data that's driving that. So, um, you know why that's low, so, right? Why the average Sean, days on market are low for that? Usually, because I do a lot of luxury. Usually, yeah, please. Because it's two markets going. The, so I'd the, like to make. Hold on, let Via finish though. The yeah, market. Sorry. Is... No, it's okay. I, I was just going to say, usually in luxury, the reason you're seeing really good days on market is it's a tale of two markets. There is okay. there is the really hot, you know, low millions houses are selling like hot cakes really fast, and the other ones are on the market for a year. Is that this right here? The difference between the active days on market and the solds. If you're priced right and you're going to go, you're going to go quickly. Otherwise, you're you gonna don't, say, you know, you're, you're going to say, Mike, far away. <laughs> well, I was also for for those that are have a difficulty asking, how much do you think your home is worth? Understand this tool. You're showing them the overall market and then you say, so let's dig into your price range a little bit. What what do you think your price range is anyway? So let's dig in. And so it's an innocent question that happens at, a, at an innocent time. It before the specifics, right? And so you walk away from that conversation knowing, oh, they think their house is worth around 550. So you've got that piece of information logged away. You're not blessing them for thinking that. You're not condemning that thought. You're not anything. You're just saying, okay, great. Let's take a look at what that market looks like. Yeah. So that's, it's just a way to, again, get information in your quiver. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's really helpful. I love that your your insights on the tale of two markets. I'm gonna use I'm gonna use that. Um, and normally, well, in, we in, in your that. market, my 1.2 is more like your 500 to a million. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was gonna see. Well, it might take me a minute. Let's let's actually do something. I'll do this really quick so people can see how fast. 
if I go to settings, what's what's your what MLS do you work? NWMLS. Northwest, right? Yeah, Northwest MLS. Oh, that's cool. So um, now I can hurry and add. What's a county that you want me to add King. that's up there? King County. Wow. That's crazy. Now, most people, um, most people aren't going to have access to all the MLSs across the country. This is obviously my account. And we've got this this product, but um, of course, it's going to be that easy for the areas that you cover. And so, if we look at King County, then in I'm in Kirkland. I don't know if you can go to. Oh, look. Um, at yeah, we can drill down that 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 one might take a minute to build that area because it has. Oh, uh, might not have been built yet but look I, I love seeing this many transactions that's one of the difference we're fairly rural area so Bonneville County I mean the more data you have obviously the more reliable your numbers are what's cool here is once we start to drill into price points we're still going to see a pretty large sample of information so if we look here we can see a lot more happening up in these luxury ranges you've got 580 homes on the market above 1.2 so it'll be helpful for us as we um, build this product out to be able to drill into that price point more. Yeah, luxury doesn't really start here till over two two point five. So Sean, I've got a napkin because I'm drooling over this data. Like I know I'm drooling too. So to at the risk of being impatient, because I love the premise of data as the foundation. How does yeah. this actually fit in your workflow? Is it an app? Is it on your website? Like how do you? This is such a part tool and anything like you said via earlier if it's not area pro whatever you use for stats to get from maybe the the paper to something automated in real time that applies to them uh how do you work that into your flow and have that at your fingertips and if you're going to get there then i apologize for asking too quickly no i love it i think it's a great time to answer it we um it's a it's a good question i'm trying to think of the best way to answer really it's a tool in our agents toolkit. So it is it is inserted as part of the workflow. Like our agents don't go to a listing appointment without having this data ready to present. Because like you, Via, I'm like you. I like to get to the data very early. When I go on a listing appointment, I start by walking through the home to build rapport. And then I sit at the table and I go straight yeah. to the data first. That's what I do. And, and oftentimes, once I establish myself as a market export, I've built rapport. So hopefully they like me. I've demonstrated that I know what I'm doing based on the numbers I'm talking about. Oftentimes, I don't need to go into why I choose Anderson Hicks. Not that I'm not ready to if I need to, but most of the time yeah. it's done after I after I hit this data. So listing appointments, it's it's uh, some of our agents aren't taking iPads on their appointments with them yet. So they'll take a printed version of it. You can download each one to the PDF. So our our administrative support team will insert the area pro report into the listing packet before they go on the appointment. But a lot of them are taking the iPad because what's neat is you can start kind of at a high level area. Like I can start all of East Idaho, then I can move into the county and then I can move into their zip code. So I can tell this story, like Mike said, I mean, you've got it. There's you're living in two. Everyone has a house that's in two markets. Number one, it's a ge geographical market. The other one is the price point market. And so this will allow them to find the intersection of those two things. So they're talking about the right market for the client they're talking to. And so to have the dynamics of the iPad is really helpful. So we're trying to encourage and we've given away iPads as as sales prizes to kind of equip everyone with that. There might be a point in time where we just onboard people with a new iPad. I don't know. We're not. That's not very well, how I use it. And I don't know if this is helpful for anybody watching or not. Um, this is how I have learned to use the iPad that I think is um, might be interesting for everybody to hear. Um, I actually do bring it printed and that's my my script, if you will. The printed charts are my script. Okay. But I often will hand the, um, you know, we're sitting around their table or whatever. I'll hand them an iPad. I think there's a psychology to them being in the driver's seat and holding it and using their finger and doing whatever. So I'll hand it to them. Side note, when I, I'm taking the time to go through comps, which I don't do a lot, most of the time we're having a conversation that's, I, I just don't usually have to go through. Sometimes I want to go through specific comps or they want me to. I will often hand them the iPad and I put it on the slideshow 
on the MLS, so the picture scrolling. And I'm basically um, their voiceover narrator and say, okay, let's talk about this house. This is our biggest comp. Um, it is your almost exact square plan, floor plan, but, but they're faced north and we're south and they're a smaller lot. So I'm adjusting your price this and this. I also think that, you know, they have nicer landscaping, but you have a nicer lot. Let's talk about that. Let's talk, you know, so I'm, I'm, they're looking through the pictures that are scrolling when I'm doing that. So I do that sometimes with my data where I do have a hard copy that I'm leaving them with, um, that I'm going off of, but they're holding an iPad to look at it in their cool. own way. So it's awesome. Whatever, whatever you're, from the standpoint of data and, and the numbers, I think the big thing is to, um, I often say this, it's not what you tell people, it's when you tell them that makes all the difference. Ooh. And and so it's it's just like list to sell ratio. We will have people that they'll come in there, maybe they don't have a lot of real estate experience and, and chatting with them, it's a young couple, you find out mom and dad live in town. Well, mom and dad are going to be encouraging them to make a $350,000 offer on a $400,000 house. And so when we hear certain signs like that, it's very important to know where your data is at, to go and show them that, well, you know, we hear all kinds of things in the market. Would you be interested in knowing what what the list to sell ratio is? And I said, now what the list to, re list to sell ratio is that we'll say a house is $100,000 and it sells for 98000 the list to sell ratio is 98%. We know that the seller on the sellers are negotiating 2%. If it's 90%, then it's 10%. So let's take a look at that number and see what it is. That conversation is great with buyers. That conversation is also great with sellers. And when you can show them rather than just tell them, you see, there's a whole different level of credibility when what you're saying is marrying up with what they're seeing in the data and people in the end believe that numbers tell the truth, right? I don't say numbers don't lie. I say numbers tell the truth. Numbers tell us. And so it's just a matter of how much we're going to listen. And so there's key points that we we know about that. Days on market, there's certain things. And so in the case of Area Pro, and again, it doesn't matter what package you're using, you got to decide what data points are important. And, and what's important is how many homes are on the market, how many homes are selling, what's their, I mean, the price point, those nine things we focus on. And there's an easy way to convey that information in a memorable fashion that people will walk away with. And it's it's now in them, it's part of them, and it affects their decisions moving forward because they know it right away. And and whatever is there first, you know, they talk about people work typically with the first real estate agent they meet. Well, they also believe the information they hear first with as well. And so getting that information in front of them as soon as possible so that they can be working with it, confirming it if they need to, doing whatever that it is they need to do to live with that information, accept it and adapt to it and then act with it when it's time to act. So here's the kicker that you just said, Mike, that is so good that I want everybody to hear. Um, you have to know when to share data at the pivotal points to help them make the right decision. And usually sooner is better. Because if you wait, if you've been working with somebody for two or three weeks and you're showing them houses, they are all they are two or three weeks into assumptions. And because they're telling themselves a story, they're finding data to reinforce and build that story. And if you've got to break that story down, it's going to take time. And there's also a price for that. So get them directed early, 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 as simply as possible, but early. This is convicting me because um, I, I shared it recently um, I have always sold real estate despite my other businesses and my um, role at place and everything. But I I really, I didn't sell a house last year and I'm back and I am um, uh, just went into contract on my first home of the year and I'm about to write my second, like I'm, I'm, I'm back and, you know, I, I've been rusty, not going to lie, I've been a little rusty. And I'm realizing just like listening to you, I'm like going back to my last three or four conversations and I'm cringing a little bit. Because I'm like, God, the old VIA would have like pulled out data and done this, but I haven't, you know, I'm just rusty. I'm getting back in the saddle again. And this is so good for me to hear. 
because just, you don't have to know the data though that's the beautiful thing if you yeah. whatever your tool is if you have that tool with you if you like my monday mornings i spend the first half hour of my monday it's 30 minutes every week this devoted wow. to getting these numbers that i stuff in my pocket and it's done and it's over and i can pull it out on a moment and use it some weeks i don't use it sometimes i use it multiple times some weeks I have to make copies. Often I have to take a picture and text it to somebody so they can look at it. So, you know, it just it's just the devotion to it, but having yeah. it and being comfortable with it. And if you have it, then it will walk you through the conversation. It really will. It'll just walk you straight through it. Well, let's talk about buyers. Um, we've I've seen some chatter on and I'm curious about it, too. Um, you know, I've been in two situations, my last two deals, um, uh, where one of them, we had to come in at full price and, um, they hesitated a little bit because they've been reading the news and one of my scripts, um, for the record, for what it's worth, since we're talking about data, one of my scripts that I say a lot to buyers and sellers is most of the news you hear about is aggregated data that doesn't have anything to do with the specific market related to this property, which is really what you guys are saying, you know, that, okay, that's fine, but now let's really look at the zip code and this price range, right? And um, and and the and, and the fact is, I know what our showing ratios are here. And, you know, by the time we get six to eight groups through a property uh, in a very quick within the first few days of a listing, we're going to see one offer for every six to eight groups. That's the ratio in this particular area. In, in other areas, like in Seattle proper, where the, the density of population is a little higher, it can be 10 to 12 groups through a home for an offer. But that, that's in a concentrated period of time. It, it you know That's just my anecdotal via thing that it's true. By the way, that those are accurate, but they're, I don't have data on them. I just know they're accurate from being in this 20 years. So I've had to kind of talk two of them into one of them. They're going to have to come in over asking price and they're hesitating. How would I use data to get them to write the best offer? Yeah, I love that. Let me share again. I'll, I'll share for just a minute and then I'll let Mike chime in as well. Um, back to this screen right here. I think this, this illustrates that really well. Um, I'm going to explain it to you guys as real estate agent audiences, of course, you know, depending on how, who you're talking to and their personality type, you'd want to be a little more careful. But if I was sitting with someone that was shopping between 400 and 450,000, this is exactly what you're talking about right here. I would tell mm -hmm. them right now, there are only five active homes in that $50,000 bracket in the zip code that you guys have told me. I, I drilled down into a specific zip code up here. So in the zip code that you told me you want to be in for your kid's school, we have five houses in that entire bracket, and there are four that are under contract right now. We have a pending ratio of 80%, and we're selling five a month. And so in this price point, there's only a one-month supply of inventory. Houses are going for almost ask price. This is an average. Remember that. So for every everyone that's selling for under ask price, there's one that's selling for over. Now, via if we were shopping right now between 500 and 600, we might have a little bit more flexibility on what we could do with negotiations. We've got, you know, in that price range, just to show you the comparison, because I know, like you said, via the relativity is really important. We would have in this case, 21 houses in that price range and only five selling a month and a pending ratio of 24%. Now this is a little bit confusing because it's a hundred percent list to ask, you know, list to, or sale price to list price ratio, but there's more padding in that market. This is more of a buyer's market than this. And so, of course, then you have to go into the specific property, because if we're if we just went and looked at a property that's been on the market for a week or less, then then these different factors are kind of compounding. They're leading us to this probably over asked price offer in order to win. Now, if it's been out there for 30 or 45 days, then maybe you don't need to to make the over asked price unless they just had a price drop last week. That's another another variable. But those are the kind of numbers that would help. And when people see that, they see, oh, OK. I get it. I get it. There's there's a there are a lot of people shopping in this price range and not a lot for sale. So if I want to have a shot at this property, you know, I may need to come in over ask price. Mike, what would you add? So the only a couple of things I'd add with this is to is if you'll go back down to that 500 to 600 range, Sean, 
So while we've got 21 homes on the market, look, they've been on the market an average of just over three months, 98 days. Yeah. But the ones that are selling are selling in 32 days. So they're mm -hmm. selling relatively, relatively quickly. And, and so that's why that list to sell ratio is pretty tight. Now, if you, in your case, we've been looking for houses for a little while. And as homes come on the market, we're going to go see them. So what I want you to realize is that, is that you have seen everything that's on the market and none of them have tripped your trigger. So now as we're looking at homes, you're going to be looking at homes that have been on the market less than a week. And when you find your house, one or two things are going to be true. It's either going to be on the market for a very short period of time, which means the owner is unlikely to be negotiable. Or it's going to be a house that you passed on before, but they've had a price reduction that brought it back. And now it's in front of you again. But keep in mind, the seller just reduced the price enough to get your attention. It's unlikely in that case that the seller is going to be highly negotiable either. Mm -hmm. Which is why, if you look at all these list to sell ratios, they're pretty tight to the listing price. So I just want you to be prepared that that we can always try, but based off your circumstances, you should be getting ready to understand that you're going to be paying, if not if not the listing price, something very close to it, or maybe even more, especially for those houses that just hit the market. It's great. This is fantastic, you guys. This is so, so good. Sarita, do you have any? I, I was just going to say, yeah. to go back up on that chart. I love that, you know, when we have investor clients that want to write offers at 10 or 15 percent off asking, if you just say, no, that's stupid, that's not going to work. We look <laughs> like we work for the seller and not the buyer. But if we show them the stats and say, look, 99%, the lowest is 96% list, you know, list to sale price ratio. So like we can do, here's the numbers, right? I'm still going to do what you want me to do, but I want to show you the odds of you being successful. And yeah. when I tell you something, it's because I want to maximize your odds to be successful. And you're using data, not emotion. I am telling them they're crazy, but I'm using it with numbers <laughs> and setting expectations, right? And so I love that the numbers do the heavy lifting and they can still take their chances, but they see that on every price point, nothing has been even 5% uh, off of asking, let alone the 15 or 20 that they want. And that's so true, Srita, that the numbers are doing the heavy listing, lifting, but you get the credibility. Yeah. Pretty shazam, magic. Win-win. Yeah, I love that. Really I mean, they're they're, they're going to tell you about so-and-so who got the property for that. And yeah, they're talking about the needle in a haystack scenario. Number one, the facts probably aren't there, you know, because things get morphed as people try to sell their success stories. But then as a needle in a haystack, this is what's happening across the market. And, um, you know, and we're we're going to continue to expand this out. And again, I know, Via, you said, and this is not a this is not a, a promotion for Area Pro. This is really just a conversation about how important it is, regardless of what you're using, how important it is to have access to them to market data so you can be an expert. I mean, we're we're so fortunate to be in an industry where there is even a market. I mean, if you think about like in, in doctors and dentists and lawyers, like like they don't go around walking and saying, well, how's the general health of people? Like there's not this really generic conversation starter. We're so lucky in real estate because everybody wants to know about the market. And so we have all these opportunities to have these conversations. And regardless of what tool you use you need to have something that's accessible i think i'm sure people are kind of wondering well if we're building a tool like this why is mike still spending 30 minutes on monday morning running stats manually writing them down and keeping them in his pocket well that's the that's that's where we're headed it's so fun to be a partner with him and say okay well what what's next what do we do next with this and how do we take how do we remove that manual step from mike's you won't ever stop will you mike because i think that's how you absorb it that's how <laughs> it's you true. That's actually a great practice it is yeah you're right the study of it we actually there's one there's one guy in our area for a while that didn't didn't want to use this because he said well that's how i learn about it is i go and do the calculations myself and we've now we've now got him on on board because now he can still study it but he was we're saving him a lot of the manual data polls but um yeah i love i, I love this conversation about about the importance of of understanding this. 
Well, I don't know. Would you, we'd love to have you guys back. Um, I just think this, this topic is, is it a cheat and a hack almost to confidence, to credibility, to positioning yourself as, as a consultant and, uh, you know, we could continue to get in the weeds and actually it would be fun to see. And again, I'm very conscious about this is not a commercial for anything, but it would be fun to see, you know, six months from now where this is iterated and, and, you know, once you've talked to thousands and thousands and thousands of agents who has, you know, been, been using it, it'll be interesting to see, I, I bet you it's going to be fascinating to check in with you guys, you know, mid year, um, and the market's going to change too, right? The market's going to change. If, yeah, if the, people want more information on this though, guys, where would they, where would they get it? Yeah. If they go areapro.com right now, we'll take, okay. take them to a, a website, um, where that where where they can get more information and they can just fill out a quick form that comes to me and then I can do a demo for them and, sh and show it to them and there's free confess, for people should we confess to everybody that at 12 43 I texted you guys and said oh my gosh I need this today how do I get it <laughs> yeah well you you actually already have an account that's free but with all of the place customers have access for free right now so if anybody's listening that's place Better. you have an account I was ready to write you a check shouldn't have told you that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I, I love it. No, it's exciting to see your excitement about it. It means a lot to us. So I know what you're doing. And congrats for getting your first, your your, new, your, your second first deal put together. But I got, it was my first deal. And then I'm going to write, write my second. And they're both buyers, which is funny. You know, I don't. How does really... it feel? Is it fun to get back in the game? You know, uh, it, it, it feels great and it really is like riding a bike. Um, and, um, uh, and it feels, it feels great. And I don't know why I, you know, I had a lot going on last year. Who knows? Why do we make these decisions? But I'm excited about it. I think I'm going to exceed my goal. I, I, I committed to 12 homes. Well, you saw my price points. 12 yeah. homes here is going to be 18 million in real estate for me. Yeah, so. I actually listed my house. I'm moving up there with you. And the, once you tell me your price point, I'll edit your way. And I'll, I'll be your I'll be your showing assistant. <laughs> you know, everybody <laughs> says they want that. It is the the comp. It's highly competitive. Oh, I, mean, I know. It's, yeah. it's competitive everywhere. That's for sure. So I want to go back to just make one point with data, whatever it is, have the overall data that will enable you to get into a deeper conversation. The data we've been sharing with you today is not designed to do a CMA with. It's not It's not CMA level data. It's to drive credibility, to put you in the number one position, to enable you with, your, with clients, buyer or seller alike, to be their realtor. Mm -hmm. And if you wield this properly, it will make you their realtor for life. And that's that's the objective of tools like this. I told our team the other day that I, I'm a, Via knows this, and so does Sean. I'm a I'm a big big woodworker, and I've got a wood shop at home, and I've got some nice equipment. It's good stuff, but that great equipment won't do me any good if I don't number one learn how to use it, and number two after I've learned to use it that I actually use it and use it on in making something. So it's the same thing with, with these things that we have. It's one of the reasons, by the way, that I love woodworking. There's such a correlation between creating a project and woodworking. Literally all the steps are the same to be successful in creating a piece of furniture that are necessary in order for our businesses to be successful. It's this, they're this, I mean, they're so parallel, it's just shocking, but anyway, if you don't have the tool, create a tool, modest as it is, just get the information and learn how to do it. Either do it on your own repetitively over and over again or something that will happen automatically for you, but have it and have it at your fingertips. So you can just pull it up with no effort, have the information, because we know this, the internet's done one thing. When people ask for information through the internet, they wanted the information they asked for 20 minutes before they asked for it. Yeah. So if you'll put the information in your pocket or on your phone or on your iPad before people ask for it, and then you just produce it when they do, it blows them away. So I many mechanisms this call. Amen. Perfect.
This was so great. In fact, I was thinking about you talking about woodworking. It's just like photography. I know so many people that are like, I want to buy this great camera because I want to take great pictures. No. It's not the camera. <laughs> you can, you can spend a lot of money on the camera, but you have to know how to use it. You have to be consistent and you have to be willing to, to do the practice, do the time, make the mistakes, learn from the mistakes. So such a great lesson. Well, thank you guys. Areapro.com. If you want to get them, um, we will see you uh, right first Wednesday of February. Is that right, Sarita? Right. February. I believe it's the 7th. Uh, noon Pacific. That's with Seychelles Van Pool, and and it, it is going to be a similar conversation, but different. You know, but different. Um, that's how important I I plan these in advance. We absolutely are in a market now where we need to learn how to talk about data. And look, guys, if if you're not going to go with Area Pro, go with something. Promise me that between now and the time we meet, I'm your accountability partner. That you're gonna you're gonna get access somehow to data that you can then learn to, you know, track and convey to your clients. We'll see you guys in a few. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for having us. Bye. Thank you. You're awesome. It's an honor.